subscribe to the Danny Houston Podcast, man. One time, man, it's your boy Bacon Soda Boston, man. We in here with my dog down in Houston, man. This ain't Boston George, nigga. This is Bacon Soda, bitch. Yeah, we in here. Undeniable Boston out now, man. Salute H-Time, nigga. Real north side business. He got me on the south, though, but it's all love. <laughs> my first time was South Post, though. We in here. Oh, yeah. Hey man, it's going down. It's Donnie Houston Podcast. I am Donnie Houston. Check it out, man. Uh, we got a special guest in the house, man. Listen, man, this boy here been putting it down for a minute. Tanned it up, man. I'm talking about with the music in the streets, you know what I'm saying? Going crazy with Jeezy. Yo, got it, man. Just doing his thing, man. You know what I'm saying? Representing AMG. Hey, man, undeniable Boston. Boston George. What's going on, Yes, down, sir. Man? Yes, sir, man. Hey, we in here. Undeniable Boston. Night Street verified, too, on the way, man. We out here. Yeah, yeah. Talk about the new project. I was just telling you she was jamming, man. Talk, it was an EP, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was an EP. It, it was short and sweet, but, yeah. you know, to me, it was one of them type of uh, tapes, you know what I'm saying, where if you're in tune with the streets, you're in tune with what's going on, it was like one of them things where, like, I, I understand, like, the streets ain't what it used to be right now. Shit kind of a little fucked up, but niggas need some type of motivation to go get some money. So I was like, fuck it, I'm going to shoot that out there real quick, feed the people, and then I'm going to come back with that. That shit, shit, yeah, 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 man. So, uh, how long it took you to put to uh, put that whole project together? I probably put that. It took me about, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say about a year to put that together. Only because I was going through so much. You know what I'm saying? I was fighting all them dumbass cases, the pandemic. You know what I'm saying? All type of shit was going on. So, nigga, kind of put that bitch together slowly but surely. But it was really when I heard the the, the body of work that I chose to put on there. It was for that time. It was for this time, you know what I'm saying, if you ask me. So that's why I only put them. I had other records that was more, you know what I'm saying, with what's going on with me right now, but it didn't represent what was going on when we came through the pandemic and, you know what I'm saying, what was going on in the street. So, hmm. you know what I'm saying, that's why I put it together like that. Yeah, yeah. Man, you know, we uh, we, we know you, you know what I'm saying, right now for Boston, George, Big Bad Boston, all your personalities. We're going to get into right. all that, you know what right. I'm saying? Right. But, right. but talk about, bro, like, just coming up in the H, you know what I'm saying? I know the north side, right? Yeah, no, Greens Point, Texas, you know what I'm saying? 802 Seminar, you dig what I'm saying? Yeah. Hmm. Veterans Memorial, Big Veterans Dog. Memorial. What, what you was doing out there? Man, you know, shit. I was, Running like a regular kid? Yeah, just like a regular kid, you know. But, you know, I was in Auburn Court to about three, I mean, to about third grade. I'm going to say third or fourth grade. Then we moved to uh, Cannon Park. Then we moved over to Brown. You gotta, you gotta slow down to tell me like what these places at. You know, I'm, I'm oh, really, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm okay. really South Side, bro. So okay. you gotta break okay. it down, bro. So look, look, this is what we're gonna do. You know what Greens Point Mall at? Yeah. yeah. Every time it's a flood, they show this one set of apartments where motherfuckers coming out on refrigerators and all. Mm -hmm. They come flooding mm -hmm. up out them apartments. Them the apartments that I grew up in. You know what I'm saying? About third and fourth grade. And crazy part about that is, even back then, you know what I'm saying? When it would rain, my mama used to have to come down there oh, and carry us no across the water, you know what I'm saying, and put us down so we can go to the school. So that's why I kind of, you know what I'm saying, when I see that shit, I be like, damn, that shit crazy. But even the Greens Point Mall shit, like, I be seeing that shit online, you know what I'm saying, motherfucker, we talking about guns. Guns Point, point yeah. Like, yeah, now it do get <laughs> popping around there, but it's like, I guess when you from there, like, you know, like, I don't just see it like you, that, yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying, like. Nigga, I go to Greens Point, me and my kids still to this day, running Georgios, you know what I'm saying, or whatever. Go, you know, hook up, grab a quick outfit, you know what I'm saying? It ain't like that, but the same way niggas feel about Greens Point, that's how I be feeling about the South, a lot of shit on the South Side. No shit. Because I, I I'm a real North Side nigga. I, I probably been on South Post though five times in my life. You understand know what I'm hey, saying? Man, like, hey, well, welcome, baby. Hell, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Hey. Home, fuck all that. Hey, man, hey, listen. Hey, I'm a real true nigga to what I do, you know what I'm saying? But one thing I can say, you know, like over time, you know what I'm saying? But I, this is another thing, like, you know, growing up, you know, we couldn't even listen to that Southside music and shit like that, being honest, because, you know, we... Nah, that's the time we came up with. Right. You grew up in the 90s right. and you was a kid right. and you middle school age, whatever, you know what I'm saying? You grew up with certain rules and guidelines. Right. Like, yeah, this is what we do on this side. Right. This is what they do on their side, yeah. Because, like, niggas like Slim and... You know what I'm saying? The whole Switch House movement, like, you know, Screw them started the shit, you know what I'm saying? They was doing their thing, but when Slim them came, that was when we was coming in middle school and shit like that. So, nigga, we was true to the Northside shirts and, you know what I'm saying, this, this, and that. So, it was like, 
But I always saw them south side nigga like, man, them nigga look clean, man. Them nigga can't <laughs> read, you, you know what I'm saying? And shit? Yeah, we nigga, I was braided up till I was about 19. You no know, shit. I'm talking my shit down here. <laughs> Yo, real north side nigga. Yo, screwdriver king, nigga. Yo, you park that red motherfucker if you want. It should be gone, nigga. But, hey, at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Hey, yeah, Greens Point really was home to me my whole life. Because even when we moved to uh, Ventures Memorial, you know, that's really still right down Same the street area. from Greens Point. So, that's why I say that shit just normal to me. So, when motherfuckers be putting that little meme up, you want to find a nice area, move to Greens Point, that shit be funny to me. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. So you was out there, uh, what, what like middle school, high school should you do? Um, I went to, um, first I went to Shotwell Middle School. Well, I went to Wells first, then Shotwell. Then I went to Little Ike, Westfield. Then I got to Oak Ridge. Then I went to Klein. Then I graduated from Westfield. I got kicked out of every school. Though. What you get kicked out of? First we started out, we, we thought we was real bloods. You know what I'm saying? FOB, free my dog tank. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we was out of control, young niggas, and we Stay stealing, breaking in cars and shit. So, you know what I'm saying? Niggas just kept getting bullshit, getting kicked out. You know what I'm saying? Fighting bullshit. But yeah, that was my that was my school season. But look, I really was cold in sports too. Now, that's what I'm saying. You weren't doing no sports or nothing like yeah, that. Yeah, but it's just like nigga was I, like, okay, when my stepdaddy, my stepdaddy, he was like, he moved out here by third when I was by third or fourth grade. And so, you know, when we was in Arbor Court, you know, it was just my mama. You know what I'm saying? So when he came. You know, he was hustling, trying to do his little thing. So that was the first time we ever kind of like started seeing a little money. But when I started seeing them niggas get money, my uncle had got out of jail. Hmm. This nigga all yoked up, you know, with them suede shirts on, back-to-back link Continentals. And I could tell how he structured his squad, you know what I'm saying? So they would get money. It didn't last long. Nigga got booked about three, four years, you know what I'm saying? But, shit, nigga, I was telling myself, then, you know what, what I'm saying? Someone, Coming from Arbor Court where we right broke, there. broke. Yeah. So him giving me $50, him $30, you know what I'm saying? My uncle $50, you know what I'm saying? We like, shit, fuck all this shit, nigga. We got to get some money. So, nigga, that's when we start stealing it, you know what I'm saying? Breaking in cars and doing dumb shit like that. But, yeah, yeah. But you say you was doing sports. You was doing basketball, football, what? Basketball. I'm really the best around here. Uh, okay. All right. All right. Make, state your claim, bro. State your claim, bro. I'm, Go I'm, ahead. I'm, Go ahead. I'm, I'm just going to say it like this. Nigga really could play all that shit, but it's like every time a nigga would get into something, they would get in trouble. You know what I'm saying? Get kicked out, go to another school, start playing, get in trouble, get kicked out. Only only school I played at was Lil Ike. Hmm. Lil Ike, you know what I'm saying? You got to think, Lil Ike, it was, it was different than Lil Ike anyway, so it wasn't, it wasn't gangs then. You know what I'm saying? When we went to Westfield, we was all trying to be bloods and all this shit, so we kept getting in a whole bunch of dumb ass shit, so it was what it was, but. No, nah, even football and basketball, man. I, I coach football right now. My little son and them team, we were all two, seven championships, nigga. Hmm. Well-rounded, nigga. Boston George is a football coach, nigga? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. I do it all, man. Here's some news you niggas can use, Yeah, man. don't get it twisted. My hey, they know <laughs> over there. They know. <laughs> them niggas know now. Don't get it twisted. I <laughs> just be in the cut. <laughs> so so what happened? So Okay, so basketball, it never went to the, to the collegiate level because nah. you, you just get into the bullshit. Yeah, I just stayed in trouble. Hmm. Like my Kimfo, Chad, and Nate. They, they both went and played. One went and played at Texas State and the other one at the East Texas somewhere. Um, yeah, but, and you got to think, I, I was younger than them, so I came up playing with them, you know what I'm saying? So I, I always could play. It's just I could never stick with it enough to where nigga could stay out of trouble. So, because hmm. even when I went to Klein, I went to Klein to goddamn play basketball. Got there, I wasn't there for two weeks. They kicked me about that motherfucker. No. Okay, what you got kicked out of Klein for? I, had, I was at Oak Ridge, and me and I used to leave during lunch and go break in cars, steal them 10.4 screens. You know, they used to put them screens in them mm-hmm. suburbs and them expeditions. So niggas didn't understand. I had a red gloves on, red hoodie. I know at lunch, I'm out this bitch. You know what I'm saying? They don't understand. They think I'm just going to get something to eat. So I shoot out, out there in Oak Ridge. They used to have a little Walmart shit over there, Home Depot. I'd go over there, try to find me a little, you know, try to give me one two hundred dollars a TV show, I'm gonna give me one of them bitches a day. I'm good. You know what I'm saying? So I would go out there, boom. I bring one of my homeboys with me. Knew I shouldn't have brought him with me because I knew he wasn't built like that. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't for that type of shit. We got the he I stick the screwdriver, bust the window, he just shot him. He see a lady, he like, bro, come on, come on. I see the lady, we jump in the car, burn out, but she called laws. So as I'm going back to the school, the laws get behind us, pull us over, had us stretched out in front of the school. Now mind you, this the super this the superstar. Hmm. This nigga, the, the football superstar at the school. 
So, of course, this shit coming all on me. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm new to the school. You know what I'm saying? So, when I get there, they send me to alternative school. Before they could transfer me into the alternative school, I tried to shoot up out that bitch and go to Klein. You know what I'm saying? So, I could play basketball. Mm. And, man, I get to Klein. They had auctioned off all the parking spots. I'm having paper, so they auctioned a spot for $50. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm having some money. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I used to have to drop my little sister off at Westfield and then go to Klein, so I was late every day. You know what I'm saying? So as soon as I get there, I tried to, I, I didn't want to keep being late, so I said I was going to run in that bitch, tell the lady I had to use the restroom and go move my car. Before I could do it, she said we had a pop quiz or some shit, and I heard on the announcement, charging marriage to the office. I get down there. Like, if you couldn't afford the spot, I'm thinking, bitch, afford the spot, bitch, I just wasn't here. You know what I'm saying? So I popped off on it. Then at that time, I was out of control. So I called my mama. I'm like, mama, she talking crazy. I'm about to leave. So she kept telling me, get off my phone. Then the client, independent police, you know what I'm saying, came, tried to snatch my phone from him. Of course, I booked with him, slam me all down. But then they started doing research on me and found out I was supposed to be in alternative school. So they about to send me to alternative school over there. And over there, I'll turn to school like six months, like half the school year. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like three, four months, half the school year. I'm like, oh, no. You got to get the fuck on over, you know, from over here. So I ended up transferring back to Westfield where they had it. It was short term. And then, yeah. It was just, it was drama my whole school year. But you graduated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you graduated. When I went back to Westfield, the principal grabbed me. He said, look, when you ain't here, your men, all your guys, they do good. I'm going to give you one try. Mm. You get one try, you fuck up or you fuck up with them, you get them in trouble, you out of here. So, but I only had like four classes because I ain't take that, you know, you could graduate a high level or whatever. I just said, fuck it, I'm gonna just get up out of here. And all my teachers was real cool as fuck. Like, I would, cause they knew all, all the shit I had going on. So I just would go to school, you know, do the little shit. Then I had to stay after school to the teacher would teach me shit. And then I have to do a test, teach me shit, do it. Cause I was so far behind. And then I ended up doing that shit. And, they walked the stage. That was oh, cool. shit. What's your, what, is your, what is your mom saying while you're getting out of this trouble? See, that's what like, I'm what saying. Is, you you got to understand, bro. Like, I was a young nigga. So, look. I was working at Splash Town, right? And it's look. Real hey, shit. look. That check this shit out. Shit. Check this shit out. So, we breaking in cars, getting money. You know what I'm saying? So On the job? No, no, no. Before this. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm already wearing iceberg shirts one time, throwing them in the trunk. You know what I'm saying? So, when I get the splash time, I see that they had a look kink in their armor, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> on the tickets. So at first, I got the tickets, and I just went in the parking lot and sold a couple. I'm like, ooh, this sweet, you know what I'm saying? So I just, I at first, I was trying to work four or five days a week to get the, I started seeing how I could get them tickets. I was like, ooh, fuck working, I'm going to just get the tickets. So I started getting the tickets, and I saw, like, when I one time I was in the parking lot trying to sell them, and I saw, like, a, some one of the like security dude walking and asked me what I was doing. So I knew I couldn't keep doing that. Hmm. So I started going to different businesses like fucking daycares and oh, all shit. type of shit. So now they want 30, they want 40, they want 20. So now I'm going to work just one or two days a week. You know Me. what I'm saying? Getting the tickets, going and selling them. So now I'm like when the when the motherfucking uh, 180 spokes and nigga, I was going to school with screens, the pornos in my on my TV. Yeah, nigga, I'm coming no through shit. that bitch. Hey, this uh, this on my son. They, anybody that tell you this? I put the spinners. I had a Malibu. I used to call it the Malisades. <laughs> hey, look, look, look. There's no cap though, nigga. I bought the Malibu. Now, mind you, I'm buying tenth grade though. You know what I'm saying? I paid thirty five hundred for the Malibu. Put paid two thousand for the spinners, but it had the pieces. You know the cap. Mm -hmm. But nigga, nigga, this when I'm riding spinners. This this yeah, like you prime right time. on time. Yeah, 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 yeah this yeah, prime yeah. time before niggas knew what Davins. Is. Shit like that was. So, nigga, I pull up to the school and I had one of them alarms that, like, get back. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? All that shit. The Viper, I think it was. And, the, you know, the kids kept kicking the wheels to get them spinning. So, they, my alarm just kept going off, going off at school. So, they told me to park my shit at faculty parking. Nigga, you know what type of nigga? You, nigga, I'm pulling up to the school, parking where the teachers at, jumping out that bitch like, what's happening? Even then, you know what I'm saying? So, boom. How I burnt that shit up, my little homies and them, they like, Man, bitch, they all done got a job in Splash Town because they know I'm up here booming. I got some shit smoking. So they trying to sneak people through the gate. I'm watching them just, I, they going to crash. You know, I wouldn't tell them at first until I loaded up. Once I had, you know what I'm saying, a good amount of money, you got to think. I'm giving my mama 500. Wait, how 200. much money you getting from Splash Town? Man, Spurs you got to think. I'm, I'm not selling two or three tickets no more. Now I'm, I'm selling packs and shit. Like, I'm selling to the daycare 20 here. You know what I'm saying? I'm going up to this place and this place and 
You know what I'm saying? So it got to a point where people just calling me. Like I done, they done told oh, you somebody. Splash time, man. Yeah, I'm the yeah. splash time man. They calling me such and so. Regardless, I sell 10, 5, you know what I'm saying? Boom, boom, boom. But I had thousands, you know, some thousands of dollars. You know, I, like I said, I bought the Malisades now. Don't get it twisted. And the wheels. And the AC went out. Don't and forget I, the wheels, hey, nigga. Hey, hey, oh, hey. And, the, and then them two 15s on that motherfucking Memphis 1000. Yo, I was coming through that be ha, 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 ha. Yo, yo, yo. Niggas know, nigga. That be shaking, nigga. Don't get it twisted, nigga. Yo, yeah. I was there. Yo, old I was coming old through. Old nigga. Yo, yo. Don't get it twisted, Jack. It was one nigga got down fucking with me and he was fucking with a chick that was working at the church but look back to what you said about my mama so you gotta think during this time all my homeboys older than me you know what i'm saying from ike big joy like like all them niggas older you know what i'm saying and they done got out of school now you know what i'm saying at this point so they going to chocolate town i want to say the uh club connections all that so they bringing me that the club mike jones had what was ice it? age ice age mm -hmm. hey bitch come on they got the you know, the ID sneaking me, but I got a bankroll. So regardless, we're going to pay a hundred, whatever, you know what I'm saying, get in. So I remember one night, my mama called me, where are you at? That's that, uh, da, 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 hoes with the mm -hmm. shorts, man. I'm like, yeah, we in the club. I'm popping it at my mama. Boy, you better get your ass home, da, da, da. But you got to understand, I'm going to come home. Even when I would go to jail, you got to think, probably by the time I got, I went to every fucking juvenile, you know what I'm saying? How early so, you start going to jail and shit? Probably about 15 for breaking in cars, you know what I'm saying? So we would go, but you know, they'll take you to where his dad is. My mama coming straight to pick me up, you know what I'm saying? But one, even once I got out, I mean, once I got uh, 17 and they started taking me to, you know, to the county and shit, like my mama always knew, like, whatever we needed, I'm going to get it, you know what I'm saying? Regardless what it was, we going, yeah. So, man, but my little homies, man, at the splash time, I brought my distilling shit to the parking lot, and that's why I fucked it all up. I ain't want to tell them how I was getting the, the tickets. So I just put them on the cars in the mm. parking lot. So they would go smash, you know, get the screens out, you know what I'm saying, out the parking lot. They ain't know where to sell them. I had a plug at that flea market. Uh, little, little lady that worked at the flea market, she would buy them all from me for 200 So I get them 100 I make me 100 You know what I'm saying? They going to get them all. Then finally I was loaded, having a good time. Told them niggas what happened. I, I told them how I was getting them. They started getting them. They go and stealing in the parking lot and doing this, end up getting caught in the parking lot in the car with the TV, but had like a hundred tickets in the, in the, in the thing. Oh, nigga, they had my picture. I, I was banned from Splash Town for about 10 years, nigga. No cap. Wait, yeah. how'd it come back to you, though? Because once, I guess. Oh, they started looking into yeah, it. Yeah, I guess, however, they, they, I think they put pressure on the manager chick. And the manager chick, I already kind of knew. They fired her ass, so that's why I know she probably. That was probably the little deal, you know what I'm saying? You tell me we ain't going to charge you, we're just going to charge him, you know what I'm saying? And so, but they still couldn't prove nothing that I did because I quit. Once I saw my partner and them, they got jammed up and shit, and the lady, I, I kind of could tell how she was acting, you know what I'm saying? I was like, you know what I'm saying? Something, something ain't right, you know what I'm saying? So I just quit. So they never could really just pinpoint on me how I did it or what. Man, they, they wanted to know how I did that shit for the longest because I don't even think that bitch knew. Hmm. She, I was watching her and she just didn't know it. So then when she out the way, I'm going over there. Ugh, let me get that. You know what I'm saying? And she just didn't quite get it. But, but back to you know, but to my mama, like, you know what I'm saying? We, my mama was working at Luby's, nigga. My mama was probably making three hundred dollars a week. Like, I was making that shit, yeah, that day. So it wasn't then. And I was always type. I'm gonna give my mama whatever. So. Damn. So okay. So you, do you end up going to you go to college or you go to public college? Man, I went to TSU, bro, for one semester, man. And um, I told you, this shit just traveled me. I'm in that motherfucking, I used to, the Malisades. So I stayed, uh, you know, with Till, was it Till West or some shit like that? Yeah, Till West, yeah, yeah. So I had, uh, uh, my apartment was at the top. So I used to see out my window. So I used to park the car right there. And anytime I would leave, I would put a cone down. And nobody would fuck with my parking spot. One time, my little partner wanted to go get some cigarettes. I don't even smoke cigarettes, but he wanted to go get some cigarettes. I tell him he could take my car. He burned off in my car. I don't even know if he got out the gate. All I know is the nigga called me, hey, bitch, bring the chopper. So I'm thinking somebody trying to break in my car because they stole his car. He had a Delta 88 cleaned in the motherfucker. I mean, these niggas, 
he had the strap on the steering wheel. They took that motherfucker. I guess they took the whole steering wheel off. You know, these niggas cold. So, so I'm thinking that's what he called me for. So I come kick the door. I had one of them shot, uh, one of them nine millimeter shotguns. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It looked like an AK, but it was a nine millimeter shotgun. I hit the door like Rambo. Pow! What's happening? Girl and the, her boyfriend. Oh my god! Okay, okay. I'm like, oh man, because I ain't quite get it. You know what I'm saying? I just came down there. You know what I'm saying? Because he He's called ready me. for whatever. Because yeah. so he talking crazy to the nigga. The nigga like, hey bro, it's good, it's good, bro. I'm just move. I'm just move. The girl, she screaming and hollering too. I'm a move. I'm a move. So I'm like, bro, why the fuck you? We could have just whooped this nigga. We ain't need no gun. You know what I'm saying? He moved. I pulled my car there. By two days go by, I'm pulling up. Nigga had a red motherfucking by the Delta La Saber or something parked by the gate. So the way Till West was, it got the gate around it. My car, I always park right here. He was parked like right there. Man, as I'm pulling up to that motherfucker, I saw it was a nigga sitting on the on the trunk. But as I'm driving up, he jumped off. And when he jumped off, I'm thinking like, what the fuck he got going on? But I saw it was other niggas in the car. As I'm pulling up, the other nigga, another nigga jumped out the car. As I'm driving up in the thing, I just see the nigga up that bitch and just start busting. So I just put that bitch in reverse and lay down and just hit the gas so it can go backwards. They tearing this motherfucker up, letting that bitch fly. And the girl ended up getting shot. So they did some type of investigation and came. They, cause they, they, I guess somebody told them that I, you know what I'm saying, pulled the strap first, but which was a whole nother day. So they had police all going crazy through my dorm which that shit had already happened, you know what I'm saying? And then they they suspended my financial aid indefinitely. So shit yeah, ain't no going back. To wasn't me. no going back after that. I was like, fuck. So that was the worst time because then I ain't know what I was gonna do. At that time, are you are you still doing the car shit or like what you what you like? Are you nah, just straight, at that straight time, student. Yeah, I was just straight student because mm-hmm. we were broke. You know what I'm saying? You gotta think I had my time. You know what I'm saying? You know doing that, but like I said, by the end. Shit, I think by the time I was 18, 19, I probably had been to jail 10 times. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Just, and on probation and, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was, you know, misdemeanor shit for breaking in cars and dumb shit like that. But it was, you know what I'm saying? I was like trying to, I went to TSU and said, I'm going to get my shit together, blah, Hmm. blah, blah. And then for that to happen under no, I didn't even really, you know what I'm saying? My old man was in the halfway house. He had just got out. And I pulled up to go see that nigga's bullet holes all in this motherfucker. He looking like, man, what the fuck do you got going on? You know what I'm saying? But when they kicked me out, bro, I ain't know what I was gonna do. I ain't, I was I was stuck for about a, I'm gonna say about a year. And I know what changed it, man. We was at a little club. And I like I said, I'm used to being in school. You know, I'm I've been cool a long time. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, when I want a bitch or whatever, you know what I'm saying? I'm used to being able to finagle my way and give me a hold. Nothing else, you know what I'm saying? So I never forget, we right there on 45 and right by Mattress Mac uh mm-hmm. spot. They had a little club right there. And I got this little bitch by her hand. And this when that grill shit that came out. Smile for me that this nigga had like a little gold bar across. I got the bitch hand and I'm talking to her. That bitch snatched her hand away and we with the nigga saying, I don't talk to niggas without no grill. Hey. Now you talk about, about shit not, on the real niggas. Not, not hey. by the song, guy. Hey. Not hey, by the song, guy. Hey, but you should, the, the shit on the real nigga, though. Like, a nigga that didn't have his way, really a spoiled nigga, because a nigga been having his way, you know what I'm saying? Man, I ain't going to lie, bro. That was like one of them moments that, like, like I ain't going to lie. I wanted to squabble the nigga, but it was like, it was like, that's going to be some sucker shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got to she said, them. the nigga ain't say nothing. He just grabbed her hand. That bitch, ugh. And like, all he had was he, a bar. That's and the and it wasn't thing. even a go- diamond green. He just had the gold motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? The poppy mm-hmm. joint. That's probably the reason why I knew I had to vote my shit up. The first chance I get, bitch, and I'm going to see me the best way. But, but man, that, that day, man, I ain't going to lie. I remember. Because um, uh, at that time, man, I was broke in the motherfucker. I had a Cadillac DTS on Blaze that I had bought just because I was, you know, off the runoff money from the old, you know, the old shit. I think I sold the metal. Yeah, matter of fact, I sold the metal Mercedes because I was Shut on up. the south side. No, look, we got it. Nah, I got it yeah, fixed. No, like, I think my mama got it fixed for me with some income tax money or something. Mm-hmm. I don't really remember how that motherfucker got. But I know why I got rid of that motherfucker, too. I remember we was over here on the south side. I was over here by TSU, and a nigga pulled up in the DTS. He had the window crack, and he looked at my shit and just started laughing. 
because I had broke Malibu on the side of my shit like a goofball. Mm -hmm. You remember how they had put the little stickers on that mm -hmm. motherfucker? And at this time, I'm just doing something because nigga, yeah, and I ended up selling it and bought a, a, a DTS Cadillac, but it was old, like, it was, it was that new model, but it had a lot of miles and it was bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like transmission and shit was getting fucked up. And uh, man, I had that motherfucker and I, I, I'm talking about that bitch down there about to break down. Nigga, I'm broke. It was just one of them times. Hmm. Yeah. 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 That was definitely one of them times. But, hey, between that and that nigga goddamn uh, snatching that bitch from me, <laughs> that made me tell myself, man, something got to change. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. And shit, that, hey, my uncle, my uncle used to always come down here. Now, mind you, when I... When we was in school and shit, my uncle. He was a man. Uh, he was a man. Yeah, he, he the swole nigga with the suede shirts with the little shit on. You know what I'm saying? But that's when that, that Sherm came out. You know what I'm saying? He up there having his way, smoking Sherms and shit. Because I'll never forget, I went up there one time. This nigga driving his service for about an hour. I'm like, oh, <laughs> where we going? He had that much. He had like. Wait, a, you ain't know he was with her when you got in the car with him? Hell no. Nah. You know, I'm a young nigga at this time. I don't even know nothing about no Sherms at this time. You know what I'm saying? When I first went up there with him. Man, this nigga, nephew, I got a brand new car and a pocket full of money, nigga. We're going to get wherever we got to go and this, this, and that. But he just riding in circles. I'm like, bro, God damn, they told me act was small, nigga. We going in circles. But, but, <laughs> but, now mind you, though, look, time go by. I hadn't seen my uncle in five years, six years. You know what I'm saying? Because now I'm about 18, 19 years old. But he used to always call, nephew, I'm a player, nigga. I can see you, baby. Put that ponytail on the side. Ask for it, baby. Tell that bitch get it to you. Sock it to your pocket, baby. All that old shit. So, I, you know, I used to be on the phone. Hey, you know, I'm laughing because it's my uncle. But now I don't know what he got going on up there. All I know is when, I went, there, him as a, when yeah. I went up there when I was younger, and, he, you know, he had the Jaguar with the trays on the back. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he so had, he was smoking wet, but he, but he still was holding. No, no, no. That, that one when we was younger. By now... Now yeah, you know, yeah. Back then he was smoking, but it wasn't like he could hold it. He, yeah, he was holding it. Now yeah. this nigga done elevated to I guess some other shit. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Cause now when I this time when I go up there, nigga, he's staying over there with like bone thugs and all them niggas. Oh yo, okay, yo, yeah. St. Clair. Yeah, St. Clair, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And some like them buildings, like they look like projects, but I mean I guess they are projects. They look like Garden City. Mm -hmm. If you ever seen Garden City, you know what I'm saying? But mind you, I hadn't seen that nigga in some a, a little minute, you know what I'm saying? So, and you, and you about how old at this time? I'm gonna say I was about 19 because mm -hmm. it was whenever LeBron had first got got uh, the uh signed in the league. Because when I went up there, LeBron was like his first couple years, that's when he had that stretch hummer on them 30s. I don't know if y'all remember back then, he had that stretch hummer and all that. shit. But uh, my neighbor, one of my neighbors, he always was getting down in the streets, the one that my uncle and them was mm -hmm. fucking with. So, I knew it was gonna be a point in time I would do it, I just didn't quite know how I was going to do it. So, wind back a little bit, a couple of my homeboys that played football and shit for, um, at Westfield and ended up going to college. And a couple of them niggas went to Alabama. And when they went to Alabama, they started, you know what I'm saying, trying to dibble and dabble. Niggas, man, I know you from Texas. Da, da, da. So, they, everybody knew I was always on the dumb shit. So, they called me. Nigga came down. I'll never forget. Nigga bought 10 pounds. This when them clear Air Force Ones came out. This how I be connecting dots. You know, I be a little everywhere, but it's how, because it's clear Air Force One with the blue bottom came out. I was working at Gross Supply. They working a nigga like a slave. And I'm really only working there because I'm paying about a $500, $400 car note on this ragged ass Cadillac. You know what I'm saying? The niggas, they, they end up coming down, we do it. At this time, I want to say Green was out here by 275 I think they paid us 600 You know what I'm saying? Mm. So this is my first time in a long time since the, other shit, you know Coming what I'm saying, having some, some real money. So I never Were you, were you already fucking around or you just yeah, I mean, knew we used to, to get it? And was okay. like, so you need 10, I know a nigga who when got I used it, to go to I the can club, get that for you, whatever. When I used to go to the club with my older partners, mm -hmm. they all used to want to smoke. Mm -hmm. My neighbor always had, you know what I'm saying, something to smoke. So he would have them black trash bags and at the bottom would be just the shape. So I would buy them big boxes of cigars and just twist up all this. And then when we go to the club, I have a big bag of, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. a, a, so niggas just knew, you know what I'm saying, that I had it, but it wasn't like I was you know what I'm saying? Going crazy with it. You know, three for ten type shit. You know what I'm saying? But they knew I was fucking with it. So when a nigga did that, 
I never forget. I think I made, I don't know if I made about three thousand. I don't even remember. But I went back to grow supply the next day and threw my badge at the motherfucking yeah. supervisor because I knew right then it was up because I knew my uncle had been calling me and calling me and calling me, baby. Get up here, baby. I got you. Da, da, da. <laughs> now, mind you, I don't know what type of time he on. I hadn't seen him in a little minute. It was income tax Get time. up here, baby. <laughs> Get up here, baby. I got you, baby. Look, my uncle, uh, it was income tax time. My my kid's mama ended up getting a little income tax, and I had to kill it. So I go to my neighbor. I'm like, hey, bro, I can make it happen up there. Boom, boom, boom. He laughing, but he like, all right, now you know this shit for real. You know what I'm saying? I don't want that shit coming back on me, blah, 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 blah. He was like, you're going to have to pay me. I was like, man, I can't pay you, but I'll give you this raggedy ass Cadillac and I'll give you some of my girl uh, uh, income tax. He gave me a block of 22. Me and my little partner, I told him, hey, bro, listen, I ain't with this broke shit. You know what I'm saying? We got to do something. He like, bet. And we right there on 1960. We stop at the auto zone because at that time, we didn't even know how to wrap it right. So we wrapping it with the shrink wrap and shit, but it still ain't just killing the smell. So he getting nervous because he in the car with it. Because I got him. Matter of fact, I told him I was going to give him a certain amount if he drove. I had a bitch because we really didn't have no money to even be doing this shit. The, I, 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 was, I was fucking with this little bitch. And she started, like she was one of them like spoiled kids. And I told him, man, if you get your mama credit card just for the gas and some, you know for food while we go up there, when on the way back, I'm going to take you shopping and shit. She wasn't tripping. She just wanted to fuck anyway. So, but she just wanted to kick it. You know what I'm saying? Man, we stop at the auto zone. I'll never forget. This nigga bought like a thousand of them little tree things. You know what I'm saying? Cause he trying to hide the smell. <laughs> he nervous as a motherfucker. We turn out that bitch. He all on the curb. So I'm telling him like, bro, you good? He like, good, boom. So we shoot up there. We make it. Nigga, mind you, I'm thinking we going to my uncle two-story house with the Jaguar. We pull the St. Clair, I guess, you know what I'm saying? To the, to the, yeah. And I get up there. This nigga skinny than a motherfucker. Man. He had one time for his girl, though, well, his ex-girl, Belinda, she was a real one. And she kind of was no, known out there, too, you know what I'm saying? But when I get out there, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, what we going to do? He, oh, baby, I got it, baby. If I tell you a duck and pull a truck, hook him up, baby. <laughs> da, da, da. So he, we bust it down, boom, boom. He take one, I'm talking about the first day, can't see a nothing. Second day, can't see a nothing. So I'm sitting there like, damn, the girl, the girl, she, we, the fun gone now. We done wore mama credit card out. She ready to go. So by the third day, I had went with him to a little barbershop. And this is how I ended up meeting the, the little stepbrother or whatever, LeBron. You know what I'm saying? So we go to the little barbershop. My uncle and my cousin out there arguing because they want to make the extra money. But they not even thinking about that. I need to get the fuck out of here. So they outside arguing. I slip in the barbershop. I asked the dude, like, man, what's up? He was like, man, you know, they want too much. They want 900, blah, blah, blah. I said, nine hundred. I only pay. I'm only paying two seventy five. So in my mind, she give me eight hundred. Whatever you want to give me, you give me seven fifty. Let me get the fuck out of here. He like, hell yeah. He like, how many you got? But I ain't really trust a nigga like that. So I like, man, I got five. He was like, let me get the five. I gave him the five because in my mind, something happened. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. He called me, boom. Called me, boom. But my uncle, he burned out with some nigga who played. I don't know if he had still played for the Eagles or what. He come back in the house. He because he had took four. He come back in the house, throw like 1800 on the table. Nigga, I told you, nigga, I bought a block, nigga. Duh. He going crazy. So I count the money. I'm like, uh, this shit ain't near, homie. You know what I'm saying? So his girl, she knew the dude too. So she like, hey, go downstairs. He's still down there. He want to holler at you. I go down there. He got one still in the truck that he done left in the truck. And then the other one, he done traded for some shit. You know what I'm saying? Do what he wanted to do. So the nigga was like, hey, man, I'm going to take you to a couple spots. If that shit don't go the way it need to go, you need to get up out of here because it's dangerous out here. And I was like, all right. We went to a couple spots. They didn't want it because it was that, it was the Reggie. You know, they wanted that popcorn shit over there. Mm -hmm. And then for the prices that they were trying to sell it for, it wasn't just going to move like that. But then I was swindled with the barber nigga. Me and the barber had got cool. Next thing you know, it was up. It was up. I was down there for about three years. I was going to say, how long they run? They run I'm going to say about three, four years. Mm -hmm. Nigga, Cheddar to Connect. My partner Lee, Candy Painley, all I had, man, them niggas, I came back here and unload. I, oh, I you turned niggas up out yeah, here? Yeah, I took though. everybody from over here. Well, really, I was doing it by myself at first. And then they, they had started shipping me a bunch of shit up in uh, Nashville and Memphis in between. So I would go down there and catch it. And one night, I'm in a strip club, 
I go to the fucking car wash. I had that navigate on 28s. I drove my truck down there like a fucking crash dummy. It was a Walmart and some projects right across. It's about three in the morning. I decided to go wash the truck for whatever stupid, goofy ass reason. I pull up some little kids, some little young niggas come out the um out the out the little spot over there and try to draw down on me, but it was a fake gun. When the nigga put the gun on, on my face, he like, give me everything. When he did it, I just, you know, my normal reaction did like that, and that bitch broke. And I jumped out, I'm, I'm trying to squabble. I had the pistol in the car, but I could tell they was like some young, young niggas, you know what I'm saying? So boom, boom, I squabble with them. But I get on the phone and I call my boy Lee and Cheddar and all them niggas. I'm like, nigga, come out here, nigga. I'm, I'm riding around the thing talking shit, because now I got the pistol. I'm drunk, I'm loaded like a motherfucker, but I'm talking crazy. I go to sleep at a little motel. This is how you know I was just out of, because I'm like I said, I'm from the hood, so you know, that I don't feel like that, but I got this brand new truck parked outside that motherfucker. Man, the next day, all these niggas put a whole car full of niggas. They was five deep in a Lincoln. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with these niggas now. Cause I don't even know who tried to rob me. So now it's like, these niggas just out here. So I'm like, damn, what I'm gonna do? So I sent them niggas up to Pittsburgh. And they shot out to Pittsburgh and then shit, they they start getting their little shit going on. And then Cheddar had one of his uncles. You know what I'm saying? Was doing his thing. He had introduced me to him. And shit. For about three, four years, we was going up there until the AMG started. And AMG started in Houston, Louisiana. You know what so, what, so, what, so how we get AMG now? AMG started going because I was already doing that shit, going hanging with Slim. Now. And I was young. I was probably, tw- I was not old enough for sure because I remember the first time we went to Vegas, I couldn't get in the club. You know what I'm saying? I had to sit in the lobby. But, Nigga, so you I meet Slim. <coughs> Slim and them just been on the outside or what? Nah, I met Slim them <laughs> and Dre, my partner. Dre, Dre yeah, you know, I know Dre, King, yeah. Dre, yeah. Dre, yeah. So me and Dre was get. Dre really saved me too because when I would come back and forth with my Mexican, one of my Mexicans got fucked up. I start having to buy the shit in the street from Cheddar Uncle. Hmm. And when Cheddar Uncle ain't have it, I'm you know I'm trying to get the shit. I don't give a fuck, and I'm sending niggas to go get it. And we getting shot at you. We doing because at this point, you know, we young. We nineteen. 20 years old in the streets trying, just to, trying to get it. Yeah, we yeah. trying to get it. You know what I'm saying? So Dre came up to me one day. He was like, hey, bro, you're going to get yourself fucked out. He said, so look, just let me handle it. You know what I'm saying? And from that point, you know what I'm saying? Me and him start kicking it. And then next thing you know, I start going to fuck with them. And then, shit, we got cool. And then me going around Slim, you got to think, this went Slim. You know, Slim's still that nigga. But I'm saying, this went, we going to Dallas, nigga, and them challenges and you know what I'm saying? And shit like that, nigga. I'm, you know, because, you know, a lot of them, you know, I already got jewelry and shit. I already had the rosary diamond chains, the Breitling watches and shit. So when I'm going with Slim, he getting first and second pick because he's greedy as, he's greedy as a bitch. He going to get first and second pick, but I'm getting third or fourth. Hmm. And it was so crazy at the time. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, but to all my friends, I was living a whole weird ass. I'm gone. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm getting, you know, money with my family and my uncles and shit up there. And not until I brought Lee and Cheddar and them, the niggas just used to be watching me like, cause I'm popping up with new cars and new this and that. But as shit got going, niggas always say, man, bro, you need to rap, you need to rap. And then I want to say, what made me start that shit? Uh, cause I, I think my first time making a song was when I got shot. Uh, and I did that, you ain't even know it shit. Boy, wait, wait, so. Take me, take me through you getting shot. How did that? Uh, um, let me see, let me see. How did that? Let me think. Did that? Is that how that happened? Um, I don't know. I don't know if I had already started rapping before this, but the way the shit um happened with me getting shot. Yeah, now nah, I had already been rapping because what made caused me to get shot was going to shoot the video. Um, me and Michael Ortiz was supposed to be going to shoot a video over there in Third Ward, and I was. I was going to go shoot it with Michael Ortiz, but Michael Ortiz told me that the week before, the day before that, or a couple of days before that, he had went out there with some nigga, uh, they used to call him Unk, nigga from uh, Louisiana. And they said right when the video was done, the nigga said he had to go. He locked the spot up, and some niggas came running from both sides, shot Unk down. I'm talking about, took out his jewelry, unscrewed his earrings and everything. So now it's me and Mike turn to shoot, literally on the next street. Mike like, I ain't shooting that bitch. I ain't even going over there. And just me being ignorant, I was like, nigga, we going. So I had ended up getting BLB. Me and BLB go over there and shoot that, uh, uh, put that on my mama. 
And when I showed up over there, just my attitude, I, I know why, you know what I'm saying? I mean, nigga probably was going to go with they move, but I just feel like the love that it was when I got there was different. And then, like, now watching Jeezy, watching Gotti, and watch these niggas, when they go shoot videos in niggas' hoods, they go give out shirts, barbecue, you know what I'm saying? They, it, You could tell they showing hospitality and receiving hospitality. Me, I just went over that bitch like, nigga, this Houston. And if I want to shoot that bitch over here, that's where the fuck we shoot it at. You know what I'm saying? And especially because one of the niggas that I knew had a spot over there. You know what I'm saying? So, man, I go over there, everything good. And, and I remember one of the little niggas came up to me. He was like, man, G, throw me a little something to give to the homies. And then me, you know, I felt like the nigga was goddamn, you know what I'm saying? Like trying to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm like, man, I ain't giving you shit. Hmm. And I could tell when I did it, and the way I did it, the nigga kind of looked at me, like, and I could tell the vibe just changed big time. So boom, I tell my partner, I start calling everybody to come over there, you know what I mean, bring the chops. Cause I am, just in case, nigga, I'm talking about damn that like clockwork, the nigga who had the spot say, hey bro, y'all gonna have to wrap up on your own bro, cause I gotta run. I'm like, nigga, no you not. You finna stay here with us, because at the end of the day, nigga, this your spot. Hmm. And nigga, if something happened, it's on you. You know what I'm saying? So my couple, my I was really had a spot right, right across the street by the Toyota Center. Right there, if you go on Scott, I mean, you go on 45, you exit Scott. Yeah. You know what hmm. I'm saying? Right there to the right to the left. Me and Kirko and them were staying over there. <clears throat> Boom. I kind of peeped it. We we stay there, matter of fact, and we burn. I kind of peeped the next day. Jesus was down here. So we go to the strip club. I'm in the strip club. I'm watching niggas in that bitch. Watching me. Wait, this after you meet Jeezy? Yeah, yeah. No, okay. I knew Jeezy anyway, but I didn't know Jeezy. I wasn't rapping with Jeezy. Like, it wasn't no CC just in the mix shit. with yeah, him. Like, gotcha. I knew Boo. Matter of fact, me and Boo, you know, we we get, you know, we out here doing doing us. And Boo was Jeezy, man. So even before I ever signed with Jeezy, knew Jeezy, I used to always be around anyway because the affiliation with the homies. So when Jeezy and them come down here, me and Boo, we're going to go back to my spot because the spot I had over there was just a hangout spot that we kicked it at. And man, when I, I was in the club and I just kept watching them little niggas, I saw niggas kept watching me. They were fucking my energy up. And I had like a couple girls with me. So I was like, man, I'm going to burn. And I ended up going to Eclipse. I shot out that bitch and went to Eclipse. I mean, Eclipse, the, the manager at Eclipse walk up on me and say, hey, man, I see some dudes over there speaking on your name and it don't look like they fuck with you. So I'm already watching them. I'm like, all right, cool. When I leave out that motherfucker, I'm headed back to my spot. Luckily, Boo didn't ride with me because Boo told me to come scoop him. But I told him, just meet me at the spot. I had to drop them girls back off. I'm glad them girls didn't even ride with me. So when I go back to the club to drop them girls off, I shoot to my spot. When I'm on the freeway, I'm coming like 45. When I go 45 to exit, or I think I don't know if I was on, what, I think it was 45, to exit Scott. When I shot over, I saw a car shoot over. So when I exited, made the U-turn, went to my gate, I just pulled in my gate and stopped. Like to where the gate couldn't close. And I'm watching to see if they was gonna come behind me. They ain't come behind me. They just kept straight. When they kept straight, I went to my I turned, went to my garage. I back up to my garage and look like I ain't have my garage though. Because I'm looking for my garage though, it wasn't there. So because I had saw that car, I grabbed my pistol off the floor. Man, I closed my door. As I'm walking to the door, I see one dude come running around the corner with a white shirt on. They pulled around the back and pulled that car up to the gate, stood jumping on top of the car and was jumping over the gate coming one at a time. So when the nigga come around the gate, I see him, I don't think just too much of nothing yet. But then when I see the second nigga, he up the pistol, shot me. When he shot me, I got behind the pole because it was like, you know how if your garage right here, you got the brick pillar that go up to the ceiling and then you walk through, it's the bushes right here to the right, then the door. I got behind the brick pillar, all three, four of these niggas shooting at the door. I'm talking about tearing that motherfucking door up with the fucking, um, Bullet fragments and the rocks is cutting me the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? I don't know this at the time. I didn't even know I was shot, to be honest. So I'm behind the brick pillar. I hear him shooting, boom, 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 but they getting closer and closer. So after a minute, I'm thinking, shit, I'm finna have to just go on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, get to move. Yeah, yeah. So I look around and they coming this way. They don't even see me. So I just start hitting at them, boom, 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 boom. But it's like I'm hitting them, but the fucking bullets don't look like it's slowing them down or nothing. These niggas still coming. I'm like, man, this shit don't work or something. What the fuck? So I shoot the bitch until that bitch click. When it clicked, but they I did see that they knew I was shooting now. So now all the ones that was in the back was running. Even the other one, the t it was only two that got kind of real close to me. They took out running too. So I run up in the house. When I get up in the house, I had three girls that was kind of staying there at the time. They come downstairs. And when they looked at me, bro, it was like a scene out of a horror movie. 
Because, mind you, I, I feel like I'm sweating. I don't even... Just yeah, going, I don't yeah. know that I'm shot. You know what I'm saying? So they like, oh, that, like the look on their face. And I finally was like this. I'm like, oh, shit. But really, I wasn't shot in the face and then It was just all them bullet fragments that fucked me up. So I jump in the car. I, well, when I realized I was shot here, I knew, you know what I'm saying? Because I was bleeding kind of bad right there. So I jump in my car, go to the hospital. When I get in the hospital, Boone was on the way. So I tell Boone them. Wait, I'm how like, far is the hospital, nigga? It's right downtown. I think it was like right, you know, right there, yeah, 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 yeah. right downtown. You know, I was right there. Look, I get to the hospital. Boo and them are all looking for me. So they all pull up to the hospital. So I'm laying in the little thing. Boo like, could what happened? Could what happened? I'm like, man, I, I swear I got him, bro, but I don't know. I think I had fucking blanks in my shit. He, man, could just get good, get together. Could you good? He don't believe me. Nigga, by five minutes go by, homicide come walking in that motherfucker. Hey, uh, there's a dead guy at the gate, this, this, and that. I pass out. I don't even know what happened after that. But <laughs> I remember Boo got up and tried to walk out. And I remember them grabbing him and saying, could, could. I mean, grabbing him. And he was like, could, could. I don't, I ain't got nothing to do with this. I just came to see him. Could, da, 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 da. And the law, like, nah, they wanted to ask him some questions. But I, I blanked out by the time I woke back up. I had all type of tubes and shit. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, the shit on me. So. Yeah. It was all good, but did they ever try to charge you with that? Or they could yeah, see you. Yeah. So what ended up happening is, um, they wanted me to testify on the dude because it was two dudes got shot. One ended up dying. The other one was on, like he was yeah, in the hospital. Yeah. Shit, so they wanted me to testify on him, and I was like, man, I ain't testifying on that nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even going. I because the news wanted me to even do it. I'm like, I'm not doing none of that shit. You feel me? So they was like, well, if you don't do it, we're gonna charge you with it. Right, but come to find out, and Boo told me this too. He said, "Cause I don't think them were homicides, homicide. Cause I think that was the feds. Cause you know what I'm saying? Cause we going crazy now at this time. So I'm like, you know, I ain't never think nothing of that shit. But they, 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 they charged me. But then I guess they had to get indicted or something like that for them to actually come arrest me. They kept saying they was gonna charge me, da, 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 da. but the shit was on surveillance, some kind of way. So they knew it was self defense. So it was no point in me really." You know what I'm saying? Yeah, going, going through the whole thing. Yeah, right? going through the whole thing with it. So this is around the time we start AMG. Mm -hmm. See, the AMG shit came about my my partner from Louisiana. He was uh me and him was getting, you know, getting getting to it. You know what I'm saying? We was doing our thing. And then I wanna say, yeah, it was after I got shot. Yeah. And then it, that's when I said, man, fuck it, I'm a rap. And then I was jamming Yo Gotti, because when I used to be going up to Ohio. Every time I would cut up 40, you turn the radio station on, they used to be playing Got It. And I ain't really knew him at the time, but I knew a nigga who knew him. And uh, nigga, I just said, fuck it one day. I went and got some beats off sound click, I want to say. And nigga, I shot straight to Memphis. I ended up calling a nigga named uh, uh, Jason. Jason. I ended up hitting Jason. And I was like, hey, bro, man, I, I need to get a verse from Got It. And he was like, seven bands. I was like, shit, bet. And that's when the Challenger came out. So that was about 2009. I jumped in that bitch. We ran, me and my Kempo shot to Memphis. We got down there. I got verses from him, Boosie, Rick Ross. Just dry getting verses. Dry getting verses. I hadn't, I was, I hadn't even been in the booth to understand how that shit really, you know what I'm saying, supposed to work. So I thought that shit supposed to sound like Jeezy got it, Ross, when you just go in there. I don't understand the mix master, the stacking, the ad libs. I don't understand this shit. So I go get all these verses, and I come back with Mr. Rogers and B King. I'm like, man, I'm finna rap. They like, I right, bet. So they trying to help me do the shit, but I don't like none of it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm really like, man, fuck this shit, to be honest. What are, what are they trying to teach you that, that you're not like? Like, like flow like, and all no, that no, shit? Like, like, I was already doing that, but, you know, they was the one fucking with oh, the, the music. Yeah, gotcha, they, gotcha, they, gotcha. Fucking with, they trying to make me like it. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I don't like none of this shit. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I ended up signing. That's how we ended up signing Killer. And me and my camp, me and my boy in Louisiana, Ennis, he was like, man, Cause he was just, we was all gonna just get behind me. And then I was like, man, fuck this, we need to sign some artists. And they was just like, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? And then we ended up signing Killer and Marcus. And that's how it all, that's how it kicked off. I remember, I remember when y'all hit the scene, man. Like, I, I'm gonna say 2010 when I first remember, yeah. I wanna say with Killer, everybody coming out, big AMG change and all this. And like, man, who the fuck, who are these niggas, man? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? It's a dude named Boxer George, he behind him, and Marcus Van Child was yep. doing his things. That's when me and Pro was at. 
on our run and shit, not the new Houston all that. Oh COVID, yeah, you know yeah. What I'm saying? We was all in that yeah. mix and shit. Like, yeah. like uh, I remember that man. What what happened with the killer situation, and then what happened with uh, like Mark man, killer man. We had killer lined up, man, a way you couldn't imagine. You know what I'm saying? Because at the time, like I said, I had my boy Lil Jeff, R.I.P. the Lil Jeff, D Town. He probably the biggest nigga in Dallas. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing my thing here. You know what I'm saying? My boy. Walter, he got Louisiana on lock, and then Alonzo had Mississippi on lock. So we we had all this shit on the choco, you know what I'm saying? So it was unlimited resources. It wasn't nothing these niggas couldn't have, you know what I'm saying? So, boom, Killer do a song with Zero called Swang Wide. Mm -hmm. I go up to Miss Terry, I'm like, boom, she, they, they with it, you know what I'm saying? But I had the Rick Ross record. So I'm like, ooh, we get Killer on this. So I call and get DJ Khaled on the intro. So DJ Kelly come on that DJ Kelly Houston Killer Callion AMG this is like when when All this I shit do is win, it's like, nah, yeah this is yeah, yeah this is yeah. when DJ Kelly on the intro and yeah. it's like yeah you know what I'm saying so boom you know with the radio station and, and labels and shit you know they want to know you playing if you want the kind of money that I was trying to get so boom I go to Miss Terry I tell Miss Terry like boom he go to record we gonna push in the streets to swing wide and then we we coming with this Rick Ross. You know what I'm saying? DJ Cali Kill Kayon. So she like, bet, let's go. Shit lined up. I'm out every day, every night working. So one night, he supposed to go on Michael Watts show. And uh my Kim folk, two of my Kim folk, like, fuck it, we'll go. Cause my, my kids, I'm like, how you do is run the streets, this is now. I'm like, fuck it, all right, I'm gonna stay home. Y'all can have on the radio station. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They get up to the radio station. I'm at home listening. Interview going crazy. He killing that shit. And right at the end, I hear him start shouting niggas out. Shout out this nigga. Shout out that nigga. And you know me, I'm a businessman. It's nothing personal. But if you ain't paying for this shit, we ain't shouting nothing out, fam. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't want what come with that. We don't know what come with that. You know what I'm saying? And the last thing my nigga say, and I love him to death, this nigga say, and one time for Trade the Truth, I don't know I remember what the radio night. station got I remember going. that night. Yeah. I remember that. I, I remember don't know that. what the radio station got going with him, but I'm riding with him and whatever come with that. And nigga, I meant I was about to die. <laughs> but look, I'm calling up there when he shouting niggas out. Because if anybody know if I'd have been there, that shit would have never happened. As soon as he just started shouting niggas out, I'd have been like, shoot, nah, we ain't doing that because... The type of money, I'm about, I'm about 100 in at this time, maybe a little more than that. And my bro about 100 in, you know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, at this time when he did this, nigga, we had went and got DJ Drama. Nigga, he got records with everybody you can imagine at this time. We flew DJ Drama down here, took him to D1 on the north side, shit that you just don't even do. You know what I'm saying? Because we wanted to show that real, man, we 100 deep, every Challenger, every Camaro you can buy, you know what I'm saying? So this shit is is blacked up already. We good. And then Killer the hardest rapping nigga. You know, he do this shit in his sleep. Man, I never forget. Watts had a had a I knew it was fucked up. My Kimbo was like, man, Watts, he looked like, damn. You know what I'm saying? And he got in trouble for that shit too. Man, the next day, I try to go up there and butt up. She wasn't trying to hit. She wasn't trying to hit. She say, George, if you don't have anything else to talk about. Other than that, I'm not going to say no names. This meeting's over with. I said, damn. I said, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got this boy named Marcus Manch. <laughs> and he's hard. Hold on. She said, well, let me hear some of his shit. And I played a couple. She's like, well, that's what you need to be doing. I was like, all right, So man. that's how that happened. And that's how Marcus came about. No shit. And he had the, uh, was a drunk party. Yep. Man, so. And Marcus had, man, listen. Marcus, I went and got records from Future. Fucking everybody, nigga. How I ended up with the Molly record. Lil Lodi was hot at the time. But of course, we street niggas, so I'm getting a street producers, you know what I'm saying? But in my mind, nigga, I wouldn't give a fuck, nigga. You got future, you got these beats, you know. Good. He walked in the studio one day and he was like, man, I don't really like that shit. Now, mind you, I probably, I don't remember what I gave future, but I know it was about, it, it was, you know what I'm saying, sell me eight, nine, ten thousand, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, in my mind, nigga, you got to love this shit. What the fuck is you talking about? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And i never forget, we had just came back from Miami. And they 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 had put us on Molly when we was down there. 
And when I came in the studio, I just started saying, Molly, Molly, we gonna blame it on that Molly. And then Chill said, man, George, say anybody seen. I said, anybody seen my boom. And we would play that bitch. Just, it was just a, that, that little part and a freestyle. And Jay Bone came in that bitch one day and he was like, bro, that's the record right there. But then the girls kept saying, man, uh, play that other song, that other song, you know, the, the Molly one, da, da, da. And that's how my that's how I started really rapping. And that shit really when I was DJing that faces at the original faces. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I remember when that shit came out. This is 2012, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And bro, I played that shit. And it was just it was just going. And I'm like, wait a minute, the CEO got a record? That shit, that tripped me out, bro. I was like, how the fuck did all this happen? Like, bro, I didn't know you wanted to be a rapper first. I, it was, didn't. I, I ain't know. Oh, my, my, shit. My. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. I thought he was a CEO. What you mean he rapping? Man, listen. It took me to now, and I feel like it down there be kind of too late to get ke- comfortable behind the camera. Bro, like when Killer, if you go look at Takara, you go look at all them songs with Wiz Khalifa, I was there. I'm not in that video because I didn't want to be in no video. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Because I the shit I was doing, I had all the attention that hoes I wanted. <laughs> Nigga, I'm pulling up in that new shit with everything. I don't need no extra attention. You know what I'm saying? And nigga, I remember when Killer was shooting the motherfucking video, they had a helicopter trying to get us on that motherfucker. Hmm. No bullshit. Cause my boy uh Mississippi Alonzo, he was under investigation at the time. So he had uh we as Khalifa and them, they shooting at uh Moon and Stars or Moon something. Moon Stars, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, they yeah. shooting that motherfucker, nigga. You'll see me in that bitch for two seconds. I seen a helicopter and got the fuck out of there. Hmm. Yeah, but yeah. That's how I ended up starting started rapping though. But so Marcus, he was just a savage. Cause you gotta think we spoiled him. You gotta think a nigga went from literally staying at his mama apartment, eighteen, maybe nineteen years old, coming around us. We beating up everything. We we having every every way we can have, and everything I would buy for me, I would buy for him. So if I bought to join them, buy him to join. If I bought me some clothes, I'd buy him some clothes. That's like my little brother. You know what I'm saying? So he just was spoiled, man. This nigga in the club spitting on people like this nigga was ruthless, but he didn't understand the other side of that shit. He just knew the fighting part. He understand like nigga, his people getting shot and and this real gangster shit going on behind the scenes of this shit. So, man, fucking, I remember, uh, man, not horse man, but the other nigga, uh, damn, what's my guy name? He called me, man, you better come get Marcus now, cause this nigga about to kill him. I'm like, man, what the fuck? But Marcus, man, I had bought my, my one of my Mexican homeboys had bought a van that was sixty thousand. I asked him to borrow it so Marcus could go on tour with, uh. Was it Big Crit or I think it was Big Crit or something like that. No, it was uh, Jet Life is the best. Like, what's my nigga name? Currency. Currency. Mm-hmm. He go on tour with Currency. Smokers tour. Smokers tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, we get this whole nigga the van, him and his homeboys. They burn off, orbit all these niggas. They gone. Man, when these niggas got back, the van looked like them niggas was playing bumper cars in that motherfucker. The bumper off, the it bust up on this side. The, the, you know, I'm talking about them, them vans, the vans, the the conversion vans with mm-hmm. the TVs and mm-hmm. shit. Shit broke, all type of shit broke in this motherfucker. And my man said, just bought it. I'm like, man, what the fuck? And I was in my driveway and I'm cussing his ass out. And that nigga told me, nigga, I don't need you. Nigga, y'all need me. And I was so mad. I grabbed that nigga. And, and, and it's crazy because I, I couldn't do nothing really to him. But I, I that, that day I was like, nah. Because I knew what type of shit we was jeopardizing to do that. And I knew what type of belief my partners had in me. You know what I'm saying? Them niggas ain't risking that shit for them. They risking that shit because I believe in that shit. So I can't sink the ship. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, you know what? And then the craziest part, because it's like, how do I go to them niggas and say, yeah, y'all invested 100, you invested 50, you invested, and we're going to quit. And then the Molly song came. I was like, shit. Damn, but they been up ever since. Yeah. Okay, so how do you how do you end up linking up with Jesus on a professional level? Like how y'all make that transition? Man, I'm in Houston. I get into some beef with some bullshit. And uh we have a little shootout, everybody boom. So long story short, I know I'm I'm in the blender, right? So I take our run into Atlanta. I burn up and go to Atlanta. I'm in Atlanta and I'm just I'm really broke. I'm back down to thirty thousand, you know what I'm saying? But when I went out there, I probably had about 80. You know what I'm saying? But I had told my little sister, like, because my little sister would just piece it off with me because I knew if I had it, I'm going to fuck the shit up. 
So she would just piece it to me, piece it to me. And I'd tell her, like, if I get down to 30, let me know. Because I'm going, you know, I got I got to swim. Shit, I don't, shit, I don't know what else to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying. Hmm. Shit just ain't working. You know what I'm saying? So I get down there and, and I'm hot as a firecracker. You know what I'm saying? I, so I really can't do shit. But I'm trying to fuck with, you know, I, I needed to meet some niggas. You know what I'm saying? To get this business back rolling so I can get this shit in, in motion. So I knew, I knew um, Boo. And, you know, Boo knew a lot of them, you know, Jeezy homeboys. And I knew a lot of Jeezy homeboys from about just being around. So I was like, man, you know, I'm just going to go hang with them niggas. I ain't even talk about no hustling, none of that shit. I'm just going to go down there and kick it. And, man, I was down there. And them niggas, I used to be going out with them. And they used to be like, because Jeezy, you know, he ain't going out and this, something else. So they, I used to go out with them all the time. So nigga, like, man, if we going to go out, bitch, we need to be putting this music out or something. And I was like, man, I ain't with all that. Man, we going to promote the old shit then. And nigga, we start pumping that old shit down there. And man, next thing you know, shit. I remember we was, uh, let me think, because let's go, let's go back. Because first, I ended up having that plug record. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Boo hit me. I'm down there in Atlanta. And Boo ended up hitting me and was like, because we was down there. This time, we just down there promoting me. This one, I got the whole crew with me still. The whole AMG, ain't nobody in trouble or nothing. We down there in the Lamborghinis and everything. We going crazy. We in the club promoting it. Boo come to me and say, hey, bro, you got the uh, the instrumental? I'm like, I'm like, wow, what's up? He's like, man, dog gonna fuck with it. I'm like, shit, yeah, yeah. Now, mind you, I don't know Jeezy like that at this time. I'm just around, you know what I'm saying? So T.A. sent me the instrumental. I give it to him. We come about the club. Jeezy pull up in the ghost. He like, man, jump in. I jump in the back. He play that bitch. He on that motherfucker going mm -hmm. off. Now, if you a nigga like me, you know, Nigga, we from the streets, nigga. We grew up to this shit. Nigga, we hugged every dollar we made. If you was really getting it during them times, nigga, we playing this, yeah, trap or die, nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so for me, this shit, after I'm 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 out of here. You know what I'm saying? This we up. He like, man, let's go to the studio. You get your session. I get to the studio. We get in the studio. Uh T.I. come in that motherfucker. You know, other niggas coming that bitch and then Trey coming that bitch. And I never forget. He still know I don't like this why I, this is the source of the bullshit. You know what I'm saying? He come in that motherfucker. And when he get in there, Jesus like he, everybody lit. You know what I'm saying? We I'm I'm jumping up and down because I'm shit, this is the time of my life. Nigga, Jesus walk up to Trey, tap him on, hey, you know Lil' Cud, Lil' Cud from the time. Bro, Holmes looked at me and said, Oh, I seen him around and walked out. And when he did the shit, Bro, you could just see the vibe. It was like I was a fuck nigga. Like, but I didn't know that they respected his word like that. I didn't know that they respected even what he, because you got to think, nigga, I'm out here in Houston. We in the streets. I ain't never seen him in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Like, hustling or nothing. You know what I'm saying? He a rapper. So I don't think he could speak on me. You know what I'm saying? Just being honest. You know what I'm saying? So, and I didn't think they would value his opinion in that type of way to even care. So I didn't even, I wasn't even on that. You know what I'm saying? But I could tell, you know, the vibe of the studio kind of changed. But the record was already done. So in my mind, <laughs> you know, man, bitch, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> when I get up out of here, we better go turn up. You know what I'm saying? So I do that shit first. And that's how me and Jeezy first got, you know what I'm saying, on music side. And then when I went to Atlanta, after I came back here, you know what I'm saying, and got in trouble, like always, and went over there. And we, me and his homies started promoting music. You know what I'm saying? Then... That's when he came to me because at the time, Empire hit me up. This when Gazi first started his label side of Empire. He was already doing the distribution. This is when Rocco got that, you ain't even know it. So he was like, uh, uh, was it you? Yeah, yeah. Ain't that, yeah, Rocco? Where yeah, Rocco? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Gazi was like, man, I put your shit in the jails, like on uh, the J Pay shit and all that shit. He like, hey, man, I found a way we could really make some money with this shit. I'm going to start my label. I really want to sign you and Rocco. And I was like, I, I, I was hype about it, but I, you know what I'm saying? Da, da, da. Man, the very next day, Jeezy called. Well, I don't even remember how I ended up getting the Jeezy, but we was in a club. And he was like, hey, bro, shit, if you're going to fuck with this music, you know what I'm saying? If we was in the streets, nigga, I'll fuck with you because I know you tied in. Nigga, when it comes to this music, nigga, I'm tied in. So if you're going to do this shit, what other sense would it make than you to do it with me? And I was like, shit, in my mind, you right, because you know where I'm coming from. You know how important me making it out to my partner's going to be. So, you know what I'm saying? If if we're going to do this shit, let it rock. And that's how it started. Hmm. 
But wait, did you didn't you get shot though? Like after you when you first started popping with the rap shit? Yeah, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Well, again, because yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got shot. I'm pulling up to my spot. So I'm back and forth. You know what I'm saying, doing my thing. But like I said, this is why I tell niggas. Because I had another nigga, we had this conversation, you know what I'm saying? So I told him, it's a different when you get money running in your little corner. You know what I'm saying? Da, da, da. Nigga, I was on Front Street every night. I'm in a strip club every night. You know what I'm saying? Popping it off every night in the clubs. You know what I'm saying? I'm driving these cars around here every day. So I'm opening the door to every piece of bullshit you can find. You know what I'm saying? And I'm bucking. I'm bucking. I don't give a fuck. So, Boom. I guess the only thing I could put on it, at this time I was a little loose, even with the niggas I was having around, cause we doing the rap shit. So I had a spot on four acres, so I used to let, you know, I had a gate in front of this motherfucker. So in my mind, you know, you gonna have to jump the gate. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot your ass down before I catch you. You know, before you do that. Even inside my gate, like you know, I got the clicker. So when I pull up to the gate, I hit the clicker, the big gate open. I go up to my house. But if you're a guest and you coming out my gate, the only way you get in my gate is if I open that motherfucker. But if you're going out, it's a pole that's, you know, in the cement, and it's just a square cut out in the hole. But you ain't going to see that. Somebody had to tell you that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I knew, you know what I'm saying, that's what made me switch up my whole shit, even by having niggas around. Because at first, you know, I'm thinking I'm protected. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, we got plenty of guns. I got everything you need. To, you know what I'm saying? Da -da -da. But I was having niggas coming, going over there. I was tripping. And at that time, nigga, I was out of control. Nigga might be over there. I might have 500 pounds, you know what I'm saying, mm. in the garage, the whole streets. The, my whole driveway smell like weed, you know what I'm saying? So I I, I went and got my hair cut first. And when, on my way, and luckily my kids and my girl went there. That shit, I'm glad they, you know what I'm saying? That shit was perfect the way it worked out. Nigga, I had the little SRTA Jeep. I'm going to the spot. I get in my gate. And I had some cleaners clothes with me. And so normally I go in my garage again. If I went in my garage, it was over for me. But luckily this time again, I stopped at the front door. I grabbed the clothes. As I'm walking to the door, I hear the footsteps. But I don't, when I hear the footsteps, I thought they was right there. So I just dropped my shit and was like, all right, bro, you got it. I ain't see nobody. So I grab my shit. I get to the door. I, I, I turn the lock on the door. And I, I you could hear it again. Like duh, duh. So I turn around. I seen the barrel that chopper coming up hmm. around the thing. I take off. Them bitches busting at me. Boom, boom, boom. I'm running around my house. Now, mind you, this is a big motherfucker. So I'm running. You can hear that shit, too. That's why I tell nigga. That's why I tell nigga. All that going to the shooting range, all that shit, that shit dead, nigga. Because in war, nigga, and it's really popping, nigga, you, you ain't got time for all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, so I'm running around that motherfucker. I get all the way around to, because I stayed in the back of a neighborhood, like the neighborhood dead into my gate. You know what I'm saying? So it's only one neighbor I got, and it's on the far side of my motherfucking house. All the rest of this shit is just them black bars with the little Saints thing mm -hmm. at the top. Nigga, I get around, right when I get past my garage, I get to the gate. Nigga, I jump to get that gate. And then this motherfucker was high too, so that's what I'm telling y'all. I got a little, I got a little <laughs> bit now. Hey, I get up there, and, and I, I had one of my chains on, and it caught that, that caught little hook. And it kind of, when I went over the gate, it kind of down there hung me coming over that bitch, boom. And again, nigga, I'm, a, I'm in the backyard. I hear the car, and these niggas get out the gate because I'm thinking they're going to get to my gate. I'm going to jump back over there, get my pistol, you know what I'm saying, and be able to get them because I knew they couldn't get out the fucking gate. Man, these niggas knew how to get the fuck up out the gate, you know what I'm saying? So when I jump back over the motherfucking thing and, and go up, you know what I'm saying, to go in my garage and grab my pistol, they was already out. So I'm still, once again, I'm thinking I'm good. Nigga, I wipe my face. Nigga, it's blood everywhere. I'm like, man, what the fuck? And nigga, they clipped me in the back of my head. So I'm like, God damn. So I called my mama. I'm like, these motherfuckers shot me. Da, da, da. I'm going to look for them. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm on some Rambo goofy shit. <laughs> I'm sitting there because I'm trying to think. Like, when, when I came out, I went to the stop sign. And I'm sitting there because I'm trying to think, should I go right or left? That's all I remember. I woke up in the hospital. God damn. So what would do? Do you have any idea what that was about? Or that was just somebody nah. Else? That was that was me being too loose. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I turned on everybody right there. That when I that I was mean, big, obviously you know what I'm saying. That's when Big Bad Boston came out because then mm -hmm. I knew niggas wasn't playing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I knew 
from that point on, I'm not playing with niggas and they ain't, I ain't letting nobody play with me. So, it, you know what I'm saying? I'm only going to fuck with my niggas. You know what I'm saying? We're going to live by this shit. We're going to tattoo this shit in blood. All of us went tattooed that shit in blood. And from this point on, bro, it's it's only us. You know what I'm saying? And, if, and anything other than that, nah, we ain't doing that. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, that one shit got real, though. I, I was on some, yeah, fucked up shit then, yeah. Fucked up in what in what way? Did that have a? Because I had a, I had, had like, a play on your psyche, yeah. like man. Because all I kept thinking is, I would, what if I'd have died? You know what I'm saying? My kids, da, 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 that's all I kept thinking about. So it would play on me and play on me, and then man, I was on them perks and all that liquor. <laughs> man, I just used to start flipping out on niggas, left and right, trying oh, to pop shit. it out. How long you went through that thing? Um, I'm gonna say around this time. This like when I'm coming down for for us like one of my Mexican homeboys got jammed up because right now we already got Molly out you know what I'm saying we we doing our thing you know what I'm saying we we out you know what I'm saying we doing our thing I'm fucking with like the the celebrity niggas but we ain't making no money no more you know what I'm saying like so I'm constantly spending money spending money spending money spending money so that the drugs and the fact that me thinking like one of these whole ass niggas that set me up. Had me just looking at niggas crazy. Like, I used to be on some crazy shit because mm. it was too much shit going on in my head. You know what I'm saying? But is this around the time with the uh, with Adrian Broner and all this shit? Is that, that, that nah, Adrian Broner came like way, way later. Adrian Broner, that shit is a, you know, I'm going to say Adrian Broner shit, that's when Jeezy was with YG and they had that my nigga, my, uh, when YG had the my nigga. So mm -hmm. now this after that, you know, the Adrian Broner shit came after that. Mm -hmm. And that was just some crazy shit. Agent Brown just was on some dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was just on some dumb <laughs> shit. And we, we, by then, we was already so click tight then that it was, then I had the real solid niggas around me, grown men that was on that. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I ain't need 20 niggas no more. Give me my 10 niggas and I promise you, we gonna have a business. You know what I'm saying? Because it was all grown men. They had, they own, every one of my partners had, they partners, you know what I'm saying? Which they don't bring around me. I don't bring my partners around them. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. these my little niggas, but these my little niggas, we fuck around. And only, if, we don't bring them together. Nah. But if shit pop out now, you know what I'm saying? Niggas know how, you know how they gonna handle that shit. But, yeah, with the Adrian Broner shit, man, that's when we had them guys around. So, that shit came on some crazy shit. We in the club. He asked my partner Boo to make him a drink. Boo like, man, I get you a waitress cup, but I ain't making you no drink. And then they fuck you all at me. Well, he didn't even do that. He just was mad. Nigga, I would have made you the drink. Duh, duh, duh. We get to the strip club. Mind you, I'm thinking shit good. We partied all night and everything. Nigga, we get to the strip club. Nigga come stand straight next to me and start just putting his elbow all in my face and shit. I'm like, damn, bro. Like, I don't know what near like look like that. <laughs> I don't look like one of them. Like, I don't look like that. Now, I might look any kind of way, but I don't look like no nigga you come stand right here in front of. You just don't. I don't give off that vibe. And, and Holmes come stand right here, and he talking to little Junior, because Junior's standing right on side of me, but he just got his elbow just. And I'm talking about all on my chest and everything. So I'm like, damn, Holmes, you just going you just gonna bump me like that? And then, nigga, fuck you. I'm like, damn. <laughs> At this point, I'm already cuckoo mode anyway. Shit. I was like, damn. I was like, it's been a minute since a nigga tried me at this point. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, damn, this a fool one right here. And Junior told him about four, five times, hey, bro, nah, I'm telling you, don't do that. Man, fuck this nigga. He like, Junior like, bro, I'm telling you, this nigga family, you is tripping. <laughs> that nigga like, man, fuck that nigga. I don't give a fuck. I was like, oh no! Nah. I turned my. I'm talking about when I turned, took my chain in. I'm watching my homeboys. They watching me anyway. By the time I turn back around, these niggas moving in. You just see niggas moving in. When I hit him, boom, he go flying. I went flying too, cause you know the the, the goddamn couch only about this damn wide. When I hit him, I flew off, and he flew off, and we fell on the floor. My, my partner Champ grabbed me up, and boy, them niggas lynching that purse, cause he had a little. <laughs> Purse on. <laughs> Boy, them niggas were trying to get that purse. <laughs> Holmes had the purse tied up like this. That's how I tell niggas, it don't matter how what type of money niggas get. When you come for something, you just that. That's why I be telling niggas, don't think because a nigga done 
elevated in no type of way that a nigga don't know how to go back to that, that shit because that wasn't it coming from. But boy, them niggas was after that purse, boy. Ooh, we <laughs> like niggas wasn't even trying to really whoop him. Like niggas was hitting him, but really trying to just hit him to get the purse. Man, Holmes was squealing and squaddling about that motherfucker. He got hit one time at the door and fell down. Boom. I mean, niggas was hitting him on the ground, but he was balled up like a little, little, little slippery motherfucker. And he got out that door. And uh, when we went outside, shit, we ran, you know, we went to go get them choppers, shit. We, I'm going to try to make sure this shit ain't going to go left. And next day, like always, the old man, I'm in trouble. The old man called me. You got business with this guy. <laughs> I'm like, hey, man. Hey, man, what does that have to do with me? You know what I'm saying? But, shit, we go sit down. Holmes and that bitch, like, I just don't understand. And like I said, respect is respect. And I got love for anything that got respect on it because I know it take work to get that. But I just don't think nobody's bigger than me like that to me to overly respect you. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm going to have a conversation with you, Nigga, we talking like men. Nigga, I'm not coming on no little boy shit on nothing. You know what I'm saying? And when we went in there, I was just watching how Holmes was in there like, you be quiet, okay? She, yeah, boy, you crazy as a motherfucker. Ain't no telling me be quiet. I don't give a fuck. But yeah, we in that motherfucker and, you know, we kind of, we we edged it out. The gangster shit about it, though. My homies, when, I, when, when the nigga calling me to go over there, I was, I, we deep. It's one of my partner's birthday. We 30 deep. So at first, I was like, man, we're going to go over there. We're going to mob over there. Then I started thinking, nah, because one of these dumbass niggas going to be done did something crazy. And that this bitch going to be a shootout. You know what I'm saying? So I said, you know what? Let me just see what type of time. Because me and the old man, we done, we done had too many conversations and shit. Like, I knew it wasn't like that type of time. No way. So I go over there by myself. When I go over there by myself, though, you got to think my homies... Because mind you, all day, we out partying and everybody like, man, the old man looking for you. The old man looking for you. And they telling them too. But I'm having, hey, I'm having fun. You know what I'm saying? So when I go over there, they blowing my phone up. I'm talking, the whole time I'm in there, this motherfucker going off. But I told them, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I'm going to text you. You know what I'm saying? If a nigga need whatever. So them niggas at the, still at the club and they kind of like, don't, you know, they, they know how crazy I am, but they still don't think. They don't know how this shit finna go. And they think I'm too crazy to know no better. So I just go over this bitch on some crash dummy shit. I ain't even think like that. Like, for real, for real. So after we end up chopping it up, I tell the old man, I'm like, man, if you really fuck with me, nigga, you'll go with me to the club. Hmm. That nigga say, George, I can't do that. I say, I say, why you can't do that, OG? I say, you know what? You right. Fuck it. I jump in my truck. I mean, I had a, uh, I was in a uh, white Bentley that day. I had that bitch blocking the gate, too. So they couldn't lock me in that motherfucker at the takeover. So he was like, you know what? We going to the club with George. Bruh, you talking about, nigga, I jump in the car like, yeah, nigga. You know what time it is. Hey, <laughs> 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 look. I backed that bitch out of there. Now, my, you my phone going off. I was sitting there like, should I tell these niggas? I said, I just wait and pull up like the mob boss, right? I said, nah, bitch, I'm just going to wait, right? So, boom. I, but I do text my partner, Champ, because I know he will come. So, I was like, hey, bro, I'm on my way. He said, bitch, nigga, it's 10 cars following me back to the address. You feel me? When I pull back to the address, now, mind you, we deep. And when I get to the address, the owner tell me, George, Man, y'all can't go up on that stage. People pay for it. I'm like, bro, we just gonna go up on the stage for a little bit and we're gonna leave. But now my partners don't wanna leave off the stage because I ain't back to tell them, you know what I'm saying, we're gonna get off the stage. So the owner at the club, hot. Now, mind you, I done spent thousands upon thousands of dollars with these folks. And I know these folks ain't spent the quarter, right? So, I, you know, I, when I pull up, I'm like, you know, nigga, you know, this nigga fuck with me, I fuck with him. He come, George, I told you. You y'all gotta get off that stage. You gotta go get them niggas. I say, man, tell him. The old man coming around the corner. Man, if you just saw home. Hey, everybody out the way. Everybody out the way. I'm like, man, hello, gang. Hey, this shit crazy. But look, so you know, I'm popping it though, because I'm like, now mind you, even in the town, everybody was kept coming. Man, I heard the old man looking for you. It's niggas in the building that know me, but ain't my partner enough to know me like that. But 
know what's going on. Nigga, I come up, up in that bitch. My partner's up there hot because they beefing with the security. But Jay and them, the, you know, the old men them don't know that shit. They just, man, when I come around, everybody frowned all up. You know what I'm saying? Looking crazy. I come up there, I tell my partner, bitch, you let me off in the jungle, bitch. I'm going to come out walking the line, motherfucker. <laughs> so them niggas look like this nigga. He's crazy. But me and the old man come up there. He got Adrian with him, though. So when we get up there, he give me his book. We up there chilling. Man, this nigga's in the crowd like, like, yo, cause they, you know, they thinking like we, we all from Houston. We know how shit go live. I done seen them folks run niggas out the town. No cap, no cap. Hey, niggas don't even think to say the shit I say. You know what I'm saying? Cause like I said, me and old man, like we, you know what I'm saying? Like we done had real conversations. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I ain't, you know, I don't got no reason to. And he know I fuck with his pimping like well, what he did. You know what I'm saying? So he get up in that motherfucker for a little bit and the vibe just crazy off because, mind you, I'm the only dumb motherfucker think that we just having fun. Everybody else is just like, man, what the fuck? Because they don't know what type of time they on. They don't know what type of time we on. So it's odd. But I'm up there, bitch. Turn. I'm in that bitch. Yeah. So next thing you know, the old man say, I I did what you asked me to. But look, I need you to do me a favor. I was like, what? He said, I'm going to leave Adrian with you. Make sure he all right. I oh, said, man. what? You going to do what? <laughs> sure. Leave that nigga on over here. Then. But it really was good because, like I said, I fuck with Adrian Brown anyway. Like, I've been, like, in Atlanta, the man used to be in Atlanta all the time. And one of my OG partners out there, Pat. That was his man's. They used to be, you know, he used to be around nigga, King of Diamonds. I could name five different occasions where the man been around. We kicking it, you know what I'm saying? Not saying he my friend, but not. I don't got nothing against you, nigga. I wish you the best. You feel what I'm saying? So I wasn't really pressed on the nigga. It's just the way he was so disrespectful. But after seeing him sit in that chair and do that shit that he did, I was like, man, I ain't. I told him that. I said, bro, listen, we are not the same. If I wanted to do something to you, that shit would have been done already. That nigga jump up. How, boy, how you know what type of nigga I am? How you know what type of nigga? Hey, bro, just trust me, huh? We is not the same. The way he was sitting in that chair, ain't no way. But, yeah, that shit was crazy. But after that, you know, I still be fucking with the nigga. I be hitting him on Instagram and everything. He, no yeah, he gonna pop shit at me, though. I was gonna, look, I, I told the nigga, we should do a celebrity boxing match. He like, yeah, yeah, I'll beat your motherfucking ass. <laughs> I ain't going to let that nigga hear professional. That's what I'm going to say. I don't know if you want to see nigga in the ring now. Nah, Street fight shit. Nah, you might that's get. what I'm saying. I'll push. <laughs> but the nigga only weigh about 160, mm. 150. Yeah, but that nigga, they take Yeah, yeah, they take me cold. Tell me they have your ass up. Swole up. <laughs> I ain't going to even bear myself like that. Nah. It take nah, nigga I, I feel fun. like I might, but I wouldn't. I done, be, I done did too much work to at least walk past a nigga and a nigga be like, hey, that's BG or whatever. For a nigga to be walk past and be like, that's the nigga Adrian knock the fuck out. <laughs> nah. We ain't, we ain't gonna do that one. We're gonna, gonna keep, Adrian, we're gonna keep that shit in my in my court. <laughs> nah, for sure, for sure. Well man, bro, what else you got going on, man? Man, right now, we got the undeniable bossing out. We got Street Verified 2 coming out. I got a bunch of, you know, guys in the city, you know what I'm saying, that I feel like, you know, real solid street guy. Like, you know, I could. When I be listening to the music, like when I used to hear Jeezy and Gotti and them, like I believe that shit word for word. Like when they hit the brakes, hit the lights, voila, let them, I'm in that Lincoln, let the Lincoln navigate, you know, all that. I'm in my navigator with them bitches in the spell tie, fam. So I'm thinking this nigga talking about me. Nigga, even with Gotti and them, so it was different. Like even Ross, you know, the push it to the limit, like pull the mic. Like when the nigga was dropping that shit, like that was shit felt real, you know what I'm saying? So to me, that's why I said, like, I want to get guys where I, I don't care if nobody else believe, I believe them. Mm -hmm. And if I believe them, you know I believe them for a reason. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we got Street Verified, too. We've been knocking that shit out. We almost done. We pretty much done. We done did about 15, 16 songs. You know what I'm saying? So we'll break that down to about 10. You know what I'm saying? We're, gonna, we're doing a documentary, too, behind it. And then uh, I got a hard-ass record, me and Fastlane, that... So I did the undeniable boss, and like I said, just to, to me, just to, I had been sitting down four years doing nothing. I went from 2019 in Atlanta cutting up, niggas saw me going crazy, hmm. to catching them cases, having to sit down all the way to 
2024. So I was like, you know what? Since I ain't dropped no music, I'm gonna just put this out. I'm gonna do the street verify because I understand the business side of with Empire. They ain't gonna give me no money unless my, you know what I'm saying, my numbers and my engagement and shit where it need to be. So I said, you know what? I dropped that just to do something. I got a video to the warm up record finna um, come out. And I wanna go do the record with the Belly Gang Cushington nigga. I really fuck with his shit. You know what I'm saying? Me and Wi Fi, I got some shit we're gonna um, do. But um, yeah, I wanted to do that and then come with the Street Verify. When we do the Street Verify, you know, it's eight niggas on there. So we cross promoting, even though, you know what I'm saying? I understand where I'm at with it, but you know what I'm saying? Boom, boom, boom. Then I wanted to recreate that unity because mm. it's a difference. Like AMG, like this way, like even with Marcus and Killing them, when they was all out, they, I had all my homies. Four of the biggest niggas you can ever imagine. By the time it was my turn, I was on my own. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't never had nobody to put no money behind me. You know what I'm saying? Like, by the time it was me, it was, it was on, on me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now I'd be like, and I remember that whole Slim, he tell me this all the time. I told you, kid. I told you. Because I remember we was at the club one night, and we all had the main MG shirts on. And, and I was like, man, I'm going to do this and that. He said, man, kid, if I was you, I wouldn't do that. Bet on yourself. He, he was like, man, I heard that shit you did. Because I guess Rogers or one of them would let him hit. He said, it wasn't good, but it wasn't that bad either. Hmm. I was like, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, I respected that. But, man, he told me then. And then even when I would try to do different type of records to please people, he was like, kid, just do what you do. You know what I'm saying? You know, the, the shit that you do, people know you for. So that even if it's just that audience, you know, they going to feed with it. That. Yeah, yeah they going to feed it. And, man, I used to buck with him, trying other shit, because really that wasn't, my passion wasn't just in the doing the music. I just like telling the stories. You know what I'm saying? I like, you know what I'm saying? I when it, when it, when it's them type of melody type beats where a nigga, you know what I'm saying? That's the shit I like to do. But yeah, so are you are you now in like rapper mode? Like, yeah, like, oh for shit, sure. I'm boss and George. I'm a rapper. Cause this time, like I said, with the pandemic, I had, I almost was fucked up again. I had goddamn you know dropped down on them numbers big time. You know what I'm saying? And the pandemic came. Lord, shot a nigga back where I needed to be. <laughs> and I ain't gonna lie, boy, I was praying. Because I done been there before. I done been from a million, you know what I'm saying, down to 30,000. I'm like the white folks. I'm about to commit suicide. Or somebody about to take me out. So when niggas didn't understand why I was flipped out like that, you got to remember, nigga, I come from seven cars, 10 chains. Nigga, everything you can imagine, I got everything to nothing. I, I mean, but I still had all the shit. But I knew I didn't have no money. Hmm. Nobody else ain't really know because I still had the shit. I just didn't have no money. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't get that low, though. You know what I'm saying? But like like I tell a nigga, 100000 to a certain nigga, it's cool. My house no 4460 So 10000 yeah, yeah. 10, go every month. Like yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like nothing. So, man, right before the pandemic, though, man, I'm back like, Back against the wall, but not that fucked up. But I'm fucked up to the point where I got to make a decision. Like, either I'm going to get back in this water and swim or I'm going to get a job. Nigga, I'm going to start. But look, niggas don't understand. This is why I tell you, and this is what my partners always got to respect about it. Nigga, I done opened, like, me and my kids, mom, we opened a driving education school. Me and my new girl, we got the credit stuff. I got two 18-wheelers. You know what I'm saying? Like, so ain't like I ain't trying. You know what I'm saying? But the money that I'm making ain't going to hold the lifestyle that I'm used to living. So even if I could, and even with my empire check, I was getting 11 seven for the longest, you know what I'm saying? So I'm getting enough money to pay my bills, but not to have me really nothing. Cause these fucking kids always want some. The girls always fucking want some. So shit, by the time, and then I can't say no, cause I'm used to having it mm -hmm. for them and me. So in order for me to try to keep it looking like we good, I got to at least make sure they straight. I ain't buying myself nothing. Nigga, when I was, Pandemic came and I was able to go back and shop and buy me some <laughs> shit. Bitch, I was feeling, bitch couldn't tell me nothing. But right before the pandemic came, man, I remember, bro, I was sitting there in this big ass house with all this shit. I'm like, man, I can't go back down, bro. Like, like I was like, man, I got to figure something out. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, what really was hurting me was catching them cases, spending all that goddamn money. And then me and my kids' mama got a divorce. She fucked me off. Yeah, she fucked me off. But, you know, at this time, I'm thinking, like, man, what I'm going to do? 
And boy, when that pandemic came and everybody started calling my phone, because they know what I can, you know, they know where I come from. So shit, everybody, I mean, I went from nobody calling me about no business to mm. all of a sudden, nigga. <laughs> Let's get it. <laughs> hey. And, hey, it was up. But I had promised myself, I said, man, if I can get back in a comfortable space, I'm going to put this up to where I'm never, if I get back to this, it's over. Oh, I'm getting a job because I know with this type of money put up, I, I even if I work a job, I'm just working a job to the have some extra yeah. money. Yeah, yeah. Bitch, I'm good though. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to that situation again. So I said, boom, I'm going to do that. If I make it past that, I'm going to put up a certain amount for rep and I'm going to give it a full swipe this time because Every time I've been rapping, I've been in the street. So no matter what, I never could focus. Because at the end of the day, nigga going to jail, somebody getting shot, somebody fucked up the money. You know what I'm saying? It's always some bullshit. And then how you going to pay me 5000 to do a show when I'm making 20000 here you know, to do? Yeah, hey, go holler my boy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it was kind of a weird situation. But when the pandemic came, man, I promised myself that. And so this go around. The pandemic blessed me enough to where I was able to do that and then put a certain amount up for rap. So I told myself, I'm going to put a plan together with the shit. I'm going to really, you know what I'm saying, give it that ditch effort that I, you know what I'm saying? And when I get to that other situation, hmm. yeah, y'all will see the difference. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> ain't no more than I because it's cool. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? I, man, I done had every car you can have. I done been around the world 30 times. I done shut clubs down. I, I'm used to being the show, though. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of hard for me to go in the club now. Nigga be mad coming to the club. Duh, duh, duh. Nigga, I don't want to go to the club and watch <laughs> you, nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to be no hater. Like, I'm not going to be the nigga that go and be like, man, this nigga. Yeah, duh, duh. If I'm in that mood, yeah, let's get it. But if not, nigga, I'm used to going to the club and, yeah, it's up yeah, yeah. <laughs> until we want to stop. You know what I'm saying? But... It's like lifestyle change. Yeah, it's a lifestyle change. So that's why I feel like now, man, I just want to give it that good, you know what I'm saying, push and shit, whatever it take, it take. What's yeah. men's meant? Do what it is. Undeniable Boston, man. I fuck with you, man. I appreciate you coming through, bro. My nigga. Yes, hey. sir. Yes, sir. You want to you some, some take one shit? No. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, shit, the niggas following you already, but just for the sake of uh, social media. Yeah. Follow your boy, Bacon. Oh, no, no. Boston George AMG on um, Instagram, everything. Boston George AMG. Wait, wait, wait. So, okay, so the Boston George, real quick, I don't know if we talked about that. Did you just pull that from watching Blow? Or Hell no. Nah, that's another bullshit ass thing. <laughs> Every time a nigga jumped that goof ass on Instagram and think I would have gave myself a hot ass name like that, I ain't even want to be in the camera. Hmm. So, what would make you think I'm going to give myself a hot ass name like that? Fucking with Slim and Rico, I go down to goddamn, we going to Dallas one time. And I had that challenge at the time, but all my homies had the challenges. You know what I'm saying? Just Shy and Slim had, Shy had the Camaro, he had that. We coming deep back to back, going down the, um, and we stop at the subway. We get in the subway. At the time, I only turned, I only kept like 20s, 50s, 100s. You know what I'm saying? 10s, 5s, shit like that, we would put to the side. 10s, too, but 5s and 1s, we ain't never put in. So we'll have big, because we go to strip club every night. You know what I'm saying? So this the strip club money. So I had a stack of fives like this in my pocket, you know what I'm saying? Because I thought we was going to go down there and go to strip club. But it was, you know, that shit looked ugly, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it looked big and goofy. So we going through the subway, and plus, this Slim them nigga, you know what I'm saying? He my guys. They ordered the food. I'm like, I got it. And Rico said, oh, shit, Boston George got it. <laughs> da, 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 da. And, Fuck Rico. And, 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 and I Kim was with us. Mm. I Kim from In, in the, the mix. mix. yeah, my nigga. So yeah, back yeah, yeah. then, In the Mix, like, yeah, y'all know In the Mix was... Yeah. Niggas was going to intermix.com trying to see if they and made it. And if they it, said they Donnie Houston on in the mix, your name is no longer Donnie. Your name is Donnie Houston. You know what I'm saying? And that nigga put up under the picture because it was me, Slim, out of we kicked. I came was with y'all? Yeah, he came down to Dallas. Yeah. And up under, because we just, I guess we was just, I don't remember how it just kept, you know, during that little trip, mm -hmm. it kept coming out. And that nigga put up under that bitch, Boston George. And i never forget, I don't know if it was MC Kane. I want to say it was MC Kane ass. He said that shit for the first time in Houston. And that shit was over. Was in venue. We was in club venue and we had bought a bunch of bottles of rose. And we were standing in that little section to the, you standing on stage to the left. Mm -hmm. And we was holding up all the bottles like this. And that nigga said, Boston George in the motherfucking building, AMG. One of them niggas said that shit, it was over. Mm. 
I done tried to change it a hundred times. No shit. <laughs> you want to change, change it for what reason? You though? see, I, I call myself everything but Boston George. Yeah, I, I call know. myself soda, triple B, <laughs> bacon soda, anything. I don't want that hot ass name. And <laughs> on top of that, yeah, I don't want that hot ass name. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want my own shit. You know what I'm saying? It just. I don't know, bro. I think niggas gonna be calling these Boston George at the time, dog. Yeah, it is, but it is what it is. <laughs> at this point. That's what it is, man. Hey, man, Boston George, undeniable boss tonight. Right now, our platforms, man, y'all check that out. It's jamming like a motherfucker. I'm Donnie Houston. It's Donnie's your podcast. Hey, man, we're about here. We out. Soda. Yes, sir. You should find something good. Oh, yeah.